good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are. I'm here again on this very day to share with us the mysteries of our redemption. And today I am here to share with us again just like I did 365 days ago on the divine mercy of God. On this Good Friday, since yesterday, the portal of mercy, the portal of mercy opened again, you know, to usher us into the inner divine life of God, which is full of mercy, full of love, full of assurances, protection, healing. That moment is now again in our midst. And that's what God wants to show us through the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yesterday event, yesterday's event, the Holy Thursday, the liturgy, moved also into, the, into today's liturgy, which is uh, Good Friday. That's why there was no concluding prayer, because Christ was taken up and then reposed into the altar of repose. For us Catholics, this is a very special moment for, us, for all of us and for every Christian. This is a very special moment, moment that is very unparalleled and unprecedented in the history of our lives and the history of salvation. That's why I'm taking this exceptional time to share this. Pardon the fact that I'm right inside of this place to do this because sometimes when this when this uh, cry comes into my heart and I, I don't let it out, if I give more time to it, I may tend to forget it. That's why I haven't been doing uh, doing much recordings because I did it to um, let it out as soon as it comes. So I'm beginning I'm beginning today, I just want to talk about the divine mercy of God. And this divine mercy of God has no limitation as far as Jesus is concerned, as far as con uh, salvation is concerned. The divine mercy of God comes with great patience. God is a very patient God, very, very enduring God. And that was why he chose certain people. Who have certain professions. Have you ever wondered why Jesus chose the fishermen? And Jesus was a carpenter. Now, that's what I want. That's the part. Another part I want. I would like to share. The, G, Jesus decided to choose the fishermen. So there are two sections. Let me let me begin with that. There are two sections of this message. First. I want to talk about the background of those, of the disciples of Jesus. And then I'll talk about the divine mercy of God, how it connects these whole um, events. And also how the divine mercy of God became um, an extraordinary moment for a thief on the cross. So these three events. So I'm talking about the background now. Jesus decided to choose the thieves, uh, the uh, not thieves. Jesus decided to choose the fishermen because he knows that these are very patient people. These are very extremely patient people because you can't be a fisherman if you are not patient. You must learn. You must have it as a virtue to be a patient person for you to be a fisherman. And that's exactly what, um, what Jesus wants to teach us. And Jesus is a carpenter. So you can't also be a carpenter if you're not a patient person. These are two detailed people. Carpenter is a detailed person. They take, they take things gradually. They don't rush their work because they have to be slow in their planning and in their execution. 
and then the another person is what Jesus taught us is also to be a baker of bread. Yesterday, which was the institution of the Eucharist, Jesus also taught his disciples how to be the baker of bread, which is the body of Christ. You can't be a baker of bread, a priest, without being patient. So that's what Jesus taught them too. Now, how does this all reflect the divine mercy? The divine mercy takes these three elements into consideration. As a, as a, as a fisherman, the virtue, there's a constant, the virtue of patience. As um, a carpenter, the virtue of patience. As a bread maker, the virtue of patience. These three things manifested the mercy of God because God is a patient God. God is a quiet God. God is an understanding God. That's why we are talking about the mercy of God today. So, when we, when we talk about the event of today, why is it so special? The hour of divine mercy. What happened today? Today is the moment when the divine mercy of God manifested so much. It began yesterday when Jesus was taken. Remember at the Garden of Gethsemane, he cured somebody who had, who, um, um, Marcus, who uh, Peter cut off his ear. The divine mercy of God was there. Even when the moment was so dicey, it never stopped. Jesus continued to show mercy. Jesus could have abandoned Marcus when Peter cut off his head, uh, his ear. But Jesus didn't do that because that was the hour of mercy. So I'm, the reason why I'm making this video is to encourage all of us to see and to take advantage of moments between now and the second Sunday of Easter. When Jesus had the divine mercy, while Jesus is still walking around the earth, doing his miracles. This is the hour. One significant thing happened today. That is the climax of my message today. Something significant happened today. A thief who stole heaven on Good Friday. On Good Friday. Yes, on Good Friday. Let me give you an analysis of what the thief did. The background. One interesting thing about the gospel accounts of, of the events or the way of the cross of Jesus is the multiplicity of characters involved. The chief priests, remember, offered money for Jesus' life. G Judas, the apostle, betrayed Jesus. One disciple, yesterday night, ran away naked. Armed soldiers arrested Jesus. Peter, his right hand man, denied him. Herod found nothing wrong in him. That was why he was questioning, what is the truth this afternoon? He was saying, what is the truth? Pilate preferred friendship with Caesar rather than defend his innocence. Simon of Cyrene helped him. The woman of Jerusalem, the women of Jerusalem wept for him. Mary Magdalene accompanied him. The soldiers crucified him. Mary, his mother, stood and watched him and so on and so forth. So many events took place. But there is one other thing. A man, a bad guy, a criminal, one of the two companions of Jesus on the cross, his role in the drama has never ceased from fascinating and blessing me. All that the Gospels say of these two is that they were robbers. They were robbers. Armed robbers. We don't know the details. No name was mentioned about these people. No details of their crimes were given. 
No story of their trial was revealed. Just robbers. They just called them robbers. Remember, there's this history in the Bible when, when something bad happens to you. Normally, some of those times, it takes away your name. Look at the woman with the issue of blood. They didn't mention her name. Look at the widow who was caught in adultery. Nobody mentioned his name. Look at the man who was found at the pool of Siloam. Nobody mentioned his name. When something bad happens to you, they don't mention your name. It takes away your name, your dignity. So these robbers, their dignity was stripped away from them. For any criminal to merit crucifixion, the crime involved must have been something of the highest magnitude like rape, heartless killings, maiming. He must have made many women widows and many children orphans. I believe so, supposedly. My eyes this evening are on the robbers. The Gospels have not yet said whether he was on the right or the left hand of Jesus. But the most important thing about him, this robber, is that he saw what no one else saw in the whole event of the Savior's cross, taking advantage of the hour of mercy. You can look back into my video on divine mercy last year. Listening to that, I made, a, I made an analysis of that hour of mercy. That's why I'm referring to it. It's going to be a sequence. The enemies of Jesus saw this thief or this robber, his shame, and celebrated their victory over, it, over him. The friends of Jesus felt his pain and poured out their tears for him. But none saw what the bad guy saw. People were distracted and focused on so many events happening. Every other person saw Jesus in the center of the mess that happened today on Good Friday. The enemies of Jesus laughed at him. His friends pitied him. But not this particular robber. There's something special about this particular robber we are trying to analyze. This robber who stole the kingdom of God saw himself in the whole drama of Jesus. In his eyes, it was not about Jesus at all. It was about his own destiny. He saw in the pain of Jesus his own gain. He saw in his shame his own fame. He saw his crown of thorns, his own crown of glory. He saw in his eye, in his tears, the, the end to his fears. He had never read about him in the Bible, but he could see that by those wounds were his source of healing. He saw that the innocent death of Jesus was the basis for his just condemnation to be repealed. Yes. He saw heaven on his way to hell. Isn't that exactly why Jesus came to meet us? God sent him to save us from eternal damnation. And that's why John 3.16 talks about, For God so loved the world that he sent, it, he sent his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have an eternal life. This thief whose eyes were trained to see opportunities for his negative trade for the first time saw something positive he saw an opportunity for change for life and for salvation for him Jesus and all he went through was an opportunity for his story and destination to change for good and what he saw he shouted out loud and clear Jesus remember me when you come into your kingdom Luke 23 42 that singular seeing that singular saying that singular act reversed the irreversible and opened the last portal of divine mercy during Jesus's life the rest were the resurrection it denied hell 
of a candidate for damnation. It robbed demons of the feast in destruction. It gave heaven a celebration. It gave back to God a lost soul. It gave Jesus right, right there on the cross, an opportunity to taste the sweet fruit of his sacrifice. The robber gave Jesus a moment to be the savior king on the cross. The savior king on the cross. He said to the robber, I tell you the truth. Today, you will be with me in paradise. Luke 23, 43. All his price was immediately paid instantly. There was no need to consult the priest. After all, when the night when the night when the high priest has offered himself to the father as the gift, as the sacrifice, and the priest offering the oblation. The thief, after stealing material things, also stole heaven as his last act. What an incredible story of grace. From a just condemnation to an unmerited eternal salvation. From the cross of rejection to the hall of divine favor and celebration in heaven. The thief who stole heaven is a revelation of divine mercy of God and the power of grace. It is the happening right now. It is happening right now. Why you still can grab this opportunity in your repentance. It is the revelation of the undercurrent reality of the drama of the cross. Regardless of what you have done and who you have been, if only you can see in Christ what the thief saw. If you can do what he did, then you will be where he is. Turn from your sins and enjoy this salvation he has brought to us. For me and for you and for the entire world. This is the hour of divine mercy. Amen.